mind a green gem? No. I absolutely no. The Harry Potter movies are epic, but many important scenes from the books were cut for time. Whatever happened to Percy and Fred Weasley? Keep watching for the scenes we wish had made it into the films. That's not good. Run! Run! The scene where Ron and Hermione got together in the last movie was great, but it wasn't what happened in the books. In the books, Ron revealed that he was worried about the house elves. Master Weasley. So good to see you again. We can try this. He wanted to get them to safety so they didn't lose any more like Dobby. Hermione throws herself at him because she has cared for the elves so much. Harry wonders if a battle is the best time for locking lips. And Ron tells him there's no time like the present. You do it. I can't. Yes, you can. That scene was changed because the entire storyline surrounding the Society for the Promotion of Elvish Welfare was cut. Hermione learns about the mistreatment and enslavement of house elves and starts a one-woman movement. She even made badges. Ron ridiculed her endeavor much through the series. Dobby is free. In the Deathly Hollows Part 2, Voldemort dissolved into little flakes, but many fans think that that ruined his demise. In the books, his Avada Kedavra rebounds during his final duel with Harry in the Great Hall. And who can forget Harry's awesome speech during that? He calls Voldemort Tom. Oh, come on, Tom. Let's finish this the way we started. Tom Riddle's body falls in a very anticlimactic way. This was deliberate to show that he was really human. A part of Voldemort sent here to die. Another important scene that was cut from the final movie involved the Elder Wand. Harry didn't want the most powerful wand. He used it to repair his trusty old one, but he didn't break it in pieces and throw it away. He laid it back in Dumbledore's tomb because he felt the old headmaster was the rightful owner. Just saying, that's the Elder Wand. Most powerful wand in the world. House Elves definitely got the short end of the stick in the movies. Creature was so proud that his former Master Regulus had tried to defeat the Dark Lord. Then, he was proud of Harry for taking up the cause. He rallied the Elves of Hogwarts to fight in the final battle. He led them out saying that his masters were heroes. It made up for all the mean moments in the earlier books. Harry Potter, the boy who stopped the Dark Lord. The scenes at the wizard hospital in Order of the Phoenix were important, but they were left out of the movie. Harry, Ron, and Hermione go to visit Arthur Weasley after his attack at the Department of Mysteries. They see Gilderoy Lockhart, who has permanently lost his mind, but hasn't changed much. They also run into Neville and his parents. They learn how Voldemort used the Cruciatus curse on them until they lost their minds. Daddy's back. Ron and Hermione's romance wasn't the only one the movies got wrong. Harry and Ginny didn't get together in the Room of Requirements. In Half-Blood Prince, he plants a big smooch on her in the common room after a Gryffindor won the Quidditch Cup. Dean Thomas is furious because he liked Ginny. But Ron shrugs, giving his best friend and little sister his blessing. It was way more exciting in the books because Harry just goes for it. Don't you trust me? Rita Skeeter might have been perfectly cast, but there's a lot of information about her missing in the movies. The sneaky, lying journalist is actually an unregistered animagus, which was illegal in the wizarding world. Her animal form is a beetle, which seems fitting. That's how she gets all her scoops. When Hermione discovers this, she keeps her in a glass jar for a full year. Then she blackmails Rita into helping them with an article to give Harry's side of Voldemort's return. Unfortunately today, you two may even make the front page. No professor had Harry Potter's back more than Minerva McGonagall. Harry had immense respect for his professor and head of house. When Harry returns to Hogwarts for the final battle, the Death Eater Amicus Caro spits in McGonagall's face. Harry is so enraged, he uses the Cruciatus curse on Caro. Then he says that Bellatrix Lestrange was right. You have to really mean an unforgivable curse for it to work. No one messes with McGonagall on Harry's watch. I've always wanted to use that spell. The movies never clarified what happened to Wormtail, aka Peter Pettigrew. 
Voldemort had given him a magical silver hand after Peter used his real hand to bring Voldemort back to life. This hand was a curse though. In Deathly Hollows, Harry and Wormtail get into a fight. Wormtail hesitates before strangling Harry because Harry reminded the traitor that he owed a life debt. The magical hand interprets this as betrayal to the Dark Lord. It wraps around Wormtail's throat, ending his life. After that, the Dementors can have you. <laughs> This isn't just one scene that was cut, it was several from every book. Peeves is a poltergeist that lives at Hogwarts. He's a trickster who causes all sorts of mischief and trouble. Some of his best scenes involve attacking Dolores Umbridge and also helping fight at the Battle of Hogwarts. His entire character was left out of the movies. Have you heard Harry Potter's the new Gryffindor seeker? I always knew he'd do well. The Weasley twins are some of the greatest pranksters in all of fiction. Umbridge came down on them hard in Order of the Phoenix, but they led a resistance movement of pranks. They finally had enough and caused a huge scene before flying out of Hogwarts. One thing the movie didn't show was the swamp. They left a portable swamp in front of Umbridge's office. All of the professors pretended they couldn't remove it, but once Umbridge left, Flitwick cleared it up easily. He did leave a little patch of it in honor of the twins. We've been thinking, Harry. We could always slip Umbridge some puking pastels into her tea. Or oh, fever fudge. They give you these massive pus filled balls it right Sounds here. great, guys. One of the funniest scenes in the books is when the Weasleys meet the Dursleys. After Vernon agrees to let Harry go to the Quidditch World Cup, Arthur, Ron, and the twins try to enter Privet Drive through the flu, but things go wrong when they realize the Dursleys have an electric fireplace. Arthur inadvertently destroys half of the living room, and Fred leaves a tongue-tied toffee for Dudley to eat. I think it's time you went to bed. Quiet, Vernon. You clean it up. In Order of the Phoenix, Harry saves Dudley from the Dementors. Vernon blames Harry and tries to kick him out of the house. But then, a howler arrives from Dumbledore. It explodes and just says, remember my last, Petunia. Petunia immediately puts her foot down and says that Harry can stay. Dumbledore's last letter explained that Harry had to live with his mom's family to prevent Voldemort from hurting him. Which characters looked completely wrong? Keep watching to find out. Personally, I think you look a bit more devil may care this way, but... Up to you. The movies leave out a lot of Tom Riddle's backstory. This makes it seem like Tom Riddle becoming Voldemort was random, but the books reveal that his mother lived in horrible conditions before putting a muggle man under a love spell. We also find out that Riddle collected trinkets of things he considered important his whole life. This is why he uses horcruxes. It's called, as I understand it, a horcrux. Neville Longbottom goes from shy, bullied boy to snake slaying hero, but the movies left out something really important about him. He could have been the chosen one. The prophecy talked about a boy born at the end of July, whose parents had defied Voldemort three times. Neville's birthday was the day before Harry's. His parents had also faced Voldemort three times. Voldemort went after Harry personally, and Lily's love protected him. That's the reason Harry became the chosen one. The books could have been the Neville Longbottom series. But you will, because you're wrong. <laughs> Harry's heart did beat for us, for all of us. We've got another storyline about a house elf that was left out of the movies. Winky belonged to the Crouch family. This elf helped Barty Crouch Jr. in Goblet of Fire because she had to do what he asked. Winky also really cared about him. She put up the dark mark at the World Cup. When she was freed, she developed a butterbeer problem, and Dobby helped her a lot at Hogwarts. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. In the movies, Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks just sort of end up together. We don't understand that they've met through the Order. The book explains their relationship in more detail. We see a fight between them because Lupin thinks he's no good for Tonks as an old werewolf. The movie also doesn't show that Lupin and Tonks have a baby named Teddy, who is orphaned after the Battle of Hogwarts. I think I've known for a while. But I think you have too. One of the biggest pet peeves of book fans happened in the Goblet of Fire. It might seem like a small detail, but people have strong opinions about Hermione's dress. In the book, Hermione wore a blue dress to the Yule Ball and she went with Victor Crumb. Harry and Ron realize how pretty their friend is for the first time. But for some unknown reason, Hermione wears a pink dress in the movie. Victor's gone to go and get drinks. She cares to join us. 
We only get to see part of the Department of Mysteries in the movie version of Order of the Phoenix, but in the book, this place is way creepier. There are 12 doors in the department, and we see a few in the book. There's an anti-gravity space room full of planets. There's the time room, which is full of time turners and other magical clocks. There's also the brain room. There are tons of brains in glass jars, and the brains attack anyone who touches them. Everyone was shocked when Snape used Avada Kedavra on Dumbledore. But Dumbledore's funeral was left out of the movie. In Half-Blood Prince, hundreds of people came. Fox the Phoenix sang a beautiful lament in mourning for his master. White flames appeared around his body and cast a magical phoenix in the sky. Mer people sang from the Black Lake and the centaurs launched to ceremonial arrows. He should know. Professor Dumbledore, you meant a great deal to him. The movies leave out Percy Weasley's estrangement from his family. He didn't want to be associated with them because he thought that they weren't good enough. But he showed up for his family at the battle. He and Fred were dueling Death Eaters. Percy cracked a joke, which shocked his younger brother. Just as they made up, Fred gets hit by a blast and passes away. This scene from Deathly Hollows was actually filmed, but it didn't make it into the final cut. The Dursleys have to leave their home with Aurors because Voldemort could come after them. Vernon is thrilled to say goodbye to Harry forever. Harry reminds them that Vernon called him a waste of space. Dudley shakes Harry's hand and says that he... I don't think you're a waste of space. Maybe there's hope for Dudley after all. See you, Big D. The first chapter in Half-Blood Prince shows the Muggle Prime Minister meeting with the Minister for Magic. We find out that only the Prime Minister knows about magic, and we learn how he met Cornelius Fudge for the first time. We also learn that the Auror and Order member Kingsley Shacklebolt is stationed to protect the Muggle Prime Minister. Harry and Voldemort have one important thing in common in the movies. Their eye color was all wrong. It's a huge plot point in the books that Harry has green eyes like his mother, but Daniel Radcliffe was allergic to the contacts. Voldemort was supposed to have red eyes to show how far he'd fallen from being human. Which scene from the books do you wish was in the movies? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the things. See you next time.